Come on, are you kidding? I just put a fat bass line in with the 808 and you don't hear the speakers farting. You don't hear the dynamics go away. Why? Because is taking care of everything for you. You don't even have to think. Jason Joshua is a mixing engineer who needs no introduction. But for those who may not know, he is a Grammy award winning multi-platinum and gold certified engineer who's worked on countless hits for many of the industry's top artists of today. Among those artists, he's worked on countless hip hop, R&B, and Latin records where one of the biggest focal points within the mix is the low end. In this video, not only am I going to demonstrate to you how he achieves this impactful and controlled low end, but I am also going to deconstruct the thought process and mixing philosophies on why he does this and whether or not you should implement these techniques for your mix. If you're new to the channel, my name is Christian, aka Goopster, and if you're looking to improve the quality of your mixes, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Before we get into the first technique Jason Joshua uses, the first thing that we have to consider is the source material and sounds that are being used within the mix. When dealing with low end, you have to take a look at the track outs provided when you get them from the producer, because some of these techniques won't make sense if you're only dealing with one 808 track and no other low end instruments within your mix. So in that specific case, some processing may vary. But for this first example, we're going to be using a song that has both an 808 and kick playing at the same time. Now, the first technique Jason Joshua uses is clip gain automation to automate the volume of the sub bass or 808 down to match the envelope and transient of the kick. Everyone knows about the world famous J line trim where we duplicate the kick up here, bring it down underneath, you come to it. Every time the kick hits, you remove it. So to do this in Pro Tools, it's fairly easy. All you have to do is show the clip gain line. So the shortcut that I like to use is Shift Start minus if you're on Windows or Shift Control minus if you're on Mac. And as you can see here, then you get this clip gain line. Then like how Jason Joshua does, what you could do is drag your kick next to your 808 and then zoom in to see how much you want to automate by. What I like to do is make sure I'm on relative grid mode and then I shorten my grid length until it lets me get into the size and note length of my kick. Then I make a selection for the duration of the kick on the bass track and dug it down by however much we want. Erase this last point by holding alt and clicking and then we're good to go. Based off the example that Jason Joshua is showing us in this video, it looks like he dug off the 808 until it was pretty much non-existent when the kick hits. But obviously when you try this automation out for yourself, adjust the automation to taste and use your judgment as to what you think sounds best for the kick and 808 samples that you're using in your mix. For this song, I dug the 808 all the way down. Now the only thing left to do is just copy this over and paste it over to all the other notes where the kick hits. But wait, we have an issue. As you can see here, when I tried copying and pasting the automation, it pasted over the waveform from the first note hit to all the others. This isn't good because if our 808 is playing different notes, then it's going to introduce a lot of clicks and pops that we do not want within the mix. This is what it sounds like. So as you can see right there, it gets really bad, but how do we fix this? Does that mean that we have to automate each individual point manually in order to pull off this technique? No, because luckily in Pro Tools, all we have to do is highlight our selection and then go over to edit, copy special, and then select clip gain. And then as you can see, the shortcut for that command is right here. Start shift C for Windows and control shift C for Mac. So with this shortcut, now all we have to do is hit it, start shift C, and then all we have to do is paste it to any other point where a kick is hitting. So as you can see here, we're not pasting the waveform, we're only pasting the clip gain automation. So once we get a whole section of a song automated, since music typically repeats in patterns, then all we have to do is highlight that selection and then use the shortcut Shift Start C on Windows or Shift Control C on Mac, click to the next point that we have and then paste it like so. Now, if for whatever reasons, there's certain parts where the 808 isn't hitting on other sections, to clear the automation, all we have to do is highlight, right click, go to clip gain and then go to clear. And then as you can see here, we don't have the automation on these first two hits. Now, let's say you gain stage your entire mix with the clip game before you started mixing and you wanted to achieve this technique. As you can see here, I gain staged everything down by negative six dB and we have the automation on the 808 track. However, if we clear the clip gain over here, you will see that it jumps back up to zero. So it's louder than all the other hits, as you can see by the waveform here. So in order to avoid that, if you do use clip gain automation to gain stage your mix, what I would recommend to do is clear the clip gain. And as you can see, we're back at zero. And then I would just gain stage it down to wherever we had it. So in this case, we gain stage the entire mix down to negative six dB, as you can see right here. And then what I would do is commit that. So all you have to do on Pro Tools is hit Alt Shift 3. And as you can see, it renders. So now it's printed with that negative six dB clip gain, 
but it's reading as zero db then from there all you have to do is go back readjust your clip gain automation on your 808 like so so then copy it over i'm on windows so i'm using shift start c but again shift control c if you're on mac and then i repaste all my automation for my 808 then once we have all the new automation drawn back in with the negative 6 db gain staging on the entire mix printed when we go to clear the automation that does not have any kick hits as you could see, it goes back to normal without having that additional boost in volume. The last thing that I wanna mention when you're doing these automation moves is you wanna be critical of how steep you have the slope because if it is too steep, you may be introducing additional clicks and pops in the sample like so. So if you want to avoid this, one thing that I would recommend is for you to just do a gradual slope like so, so that way whenever it drops down, it's not dropping down dramatically and you won't get those clicks and pops. The reason why we automate the beginning of the 808 clip gain whenever a kick hits is because whenever you have two samples that are playing at the same time, in this case, the kick and 808, what usually happens is the two elements will sum up together, increasing your peak value. To show you a visual demonstration of what I'm talking about here, I have SciScope Pro open. And one of the beautiful benefits of using this oscilloscope is that it allows you to see the sum of whatever elements that you wish to monitor. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the sum of the kick and 808 playing together with the clip gain automation engaged. So this is what that looks like. As you can see, it looks like a pretty standard, nice waveform. We got a few little peaks over here, but that's something we could address later. But let me show you what it looks like when I turn the clip gain automation off. So I'm going to highlight this. Go to clip gain bypass. So now the clip gain automation is turned off and take a look at what those same four bars look like without the clip gain automation. So as you can see here, that's a huge difference. And one of the benefits of using this SciScope Pro is that if you hover your mouse over the waveform, you could actually see at what level the waveform is peaking at. So without the clip gain automation, you can see right here, we have a peak of negative one dB. We have another peak over here at about the same negative one dB. And then this one goes a little bit lower, negative 1.22 dB. And then it goes back to negative 1.18 about, and then a little bit higher, 1.07. So essentially, without the clip gain automation, the kick and 808, again, are summing together, which is increasing that peak value. The reason why this is something that you would usually want to avoid is if you have no control over your peak signals, what happens is when you throw compression or limiting on your final mix bus processing, these peak signals will be triggering those plugins much easier. Easier, and since they're inconsistent throughout your song, you will suffer from unwanted and inconsistent distortion from different sections, a complete lack of low end control, and a lower overall AFS reading, which will make your mixes sound weak and unprofessional. To show you why this happens, we have to take a look at the individual waveforms of the kick and 808 look like when being played together in the mix. So if we go into the layers tab of SciScope Pro, you will see that I have the kick here in green and the 808 in red. If we zoom in a little closer, you can see that in the very beginning of the waveform when the kick and 808 hit the peaks and troughs almost perfectly line up which is why when you look at the sum the peak value in the beginning of the waveform is so high this phenomenon is also known as constructive interference but it is important to note that if the peaks of one track align with the troughs of another track the opposite will happen and they can cancel each other out resulting in no sound or a much quieter peak which is also known as phase cancellation so if we go back and take a look at the waveforms with the kick and 808 automation turned on you will see how when the kick hits the 808 is completely ducked off giving the kick space to occupy that low end frequency area without increasing the peak amplitude and as you can see here the 808 gradually comes back in which will give you a more consistent and impactful low end sound another reason why this automation is so crucial for your low end major key a lot of people tend to use plugins or tend to use outboard gear to compress the drums oh my god my kick is hitting the same time as the 808 what i do my just exploding blah, blah. <laughs> so they'll sit there and they'll try to find the right attack time and do everything that they can me i like the trim tool i like when the kick hits i can trim down the front part of the 808 and you don't hear it disappear because mm -hmm. the kick's taking that window it gives me about 2 db 2 
dB of headroom. Mm. Well, so a, I'm always going to be headline. 2 dB louder than you mm. before I even hit the compressor. Wow. Man, that's a headline. Maybe we should repeat that. <laughs> so again, one more time, this is what the waveform looks like again. Now, I still want to note that there's still a little bit of phase cancellation that is happening here, which we could address and control even more in depth. But that is beyond the scope of this video and is why you should subscribe so you don't miss out when I drop the information on how to fix that for the next video. If you're an artist, producer, or engineer that wants to get a Jason Joshua styled mix for your music for way less than half the price, then click the link below to fill out the mix request form to get your music mixed and mastered today. Now back into the video. The second technique that Jason Joshua uses when he's mixing low end is sidechain compression. But this isn't just your typical sidechain compression, it is slightly more nuanced. And there are specific instances where you would want to use this sidechain compression and specific instances where I would recommend for you to stay away from this sidechain compression and that technique is using Soothe 2. Like I mentioned earlier you have to take a look at the source material you're provided or some of these techniques won't work for your songs and this example is one of them. This technique Jason Joshua uses specifically whenever he's presented with multiple instruments that occupy those low end frequency areas that clutter each other within the mix. All right so this is when it starts getting real and I know you guys have had many a sessions like this and you're just like you start cursing them out like why the fuck do you have a bass and an 808? Can't you just decide on one? They're all farting on each other. For example, in this song, the three low end instruments that we have are the 808, the synth bass over here, and the kick. Now the 808 and synth bass aren't playing together in this mix, but to demonstrate this technique and this example, what I'm going to do is cut this synth bass and paste it over here. So that way we have both the 808, the synth bass, and even the kick playing at the same time. So this is what that sounds like. So obviously that sounds out of control and is one of the quickest ways you could introduce a bunch of phase issues into the low end of your mix, which in result will throw off the overall impact, but this is where the sidechain compression from Soothe comes in. Now, in order to pull off this technique properly, you have to have your tracks routed in a similar way as Jason Joshua. So to quickly break that down, the way he has all his low end routed is he has all of his 808 tracks going to a bus called the Boom, and then he has all of his other bass tracks going to the bass all and his kick is still routed out to his drum bus the boom is the 808 channel yes yeah, sorry so whenever you see the boom on your template it'll always be the 808 the bass will be the bass the boom and the bass now just a quick disclaimer this next part is going to get very technical but i recommend re-watching this section a few times if you get lost the first time through but the idea behind this technique is that if you have two or more bass instruments occupying the same frequency areas what you do is throw soothe on the bus of whichever instrument you want to dug down in frequency so in this case, I want to dug down the synth bass, so I'm going to throw Soothe on the bass all bus and then throw it in sidechain mode with these settings. Then duplicate the audio tracks of the other low end instruments that you want to trigger the Soothe sidechain. So in this case, I'm going to duplicate the 808 and the kick track for this example. And when you're duplicating, make sure you duplicate it exactly. Then what we could do is change the color. So I'll change it to green so that way we know that this is going to feed the Soothe sidechain. And then also I like to make it smaller. But once we have these audio tracks duplicated, what we're going to do is throw them into solo safe mode. So if you're on Windows, hold Control and click S. Or if you're on Mac hold command and click this little S right here like so. Then what you're going to do is route them to a free available bus. So in this case, I'm going to be using bus five and you guys can go ahead and rename this whatever you want. So that way you can keep track of it a little bit easier. So in this case, I'm going to name it base all sidechain. Then go back to the soothe on the base all bus. And then for the key input, select that same output of the bus that you use. So you go up here to the key input, we go to bus. And then since I have base all sidechain, so now whenever the kick or the 808 hits it is going to be ducking the low end frequencies on the synth bass. So now that we have everything set up properly, since we put Soothe on the bass all bus and routed the audio of the duplicate kick and 808 track to trigger the Soothe, whenever a kick or 808 hits while the synth bass is playing, it will only duck out the low end frequencies while still letting the upper harmonics and low mids cut through from the synth bass based off of whatever cutoff point you set in Soothe. So what I'm gonna do for you guys here is I'm gonna loop this four bars again and you're gonna see how Soothe is working to duck the synth bass.
And if you want additional control over how much your synth bass or whatever secondary low end instrument you're using is getting ducked within your mix, you can go back to Soothe and adjust the depth knob to control how much ducking you're getting. You could adjust the attack and release to control how quick the ducking takes place and how long it holds for and adjust this high cut knob right here to choose up to what frequency you want your secondary low end instrument to be affected. So let me just show you guys what that would look like. So while this is a super cool technique for mixing your low end, if you have multiple low end instruments playing at the same time within your mix, there are a few caveats from this technique that I want you to consider. The first one is that even though you're ducking off the low end of the secondary bass instrument, in this case, the synth bass, you still may not completely remove all those low end frequencies, which will still cause phase cancellations in your mix. To demonstrate, I have the kick, 808, and synth bass solo to show you what all three of these firing off at the same time look like in Cisco Pro. Without the Sooth sidechain, this is what our waveform looks like. As you can see here, there's a lot of peaks and dips that's just creating an overall inconsistent sound, which is making our low end sound messy and muddy. But with the Sooth sidechain, this is what that waveform looks and sounds like. Now this sounds a whole lot better and even looks a whole lot more consistent than without the Sooth sidechain processing because we're removing those low end frequencies from the synth bass. However, if you look at the waveform, it still isn't fully consistent. As you can see, it peaks, then it dips down, and then it goes back up and then it hits again and then it trickles back down but it's not a steady slope now obviously that's just looking at it we have to listen to how it sounds but take note of how the volume of the low end goes high and then it goes low and then it moves higher a little bit and it's just not as consistent make sure you guys are listening in headphones or on a good set of speakers in order to really hear what this sounds like This happens because the phase of the two low end instruments still slightly cancel each other out, which is creating those peaks and nulls within certain points of the low end. Now for this final example, let me just mute the synth bass completely and show you what just the kick and 808 are doing again by themselves. So with just the kick and 808 by themselves, that's going to be shown here in purple. As you can see here, the waveform is more consistent and predictable and dies down at a more steady slope, which will give you that super tight, impactful, controlled sounding low end. If I play it one more time, take a note at how consistent the low end sounds and how it isn't jumping up or down in volume. So what I'm getting at here is that even if you use this technique, you're not 100% in the clear because you still may come across certain phase issues that make your low end sound inconsistent. Now, it still sounds 100% better than without the sidechain processing from Soothe because that's when the low end is completely out of control. But for that reason, I only recommend using this technique if the mix that you're working with has those two low end instruments firing off at the same time and the artist or producer that you're working with are 100% set on having these two instruments working together like that in the mix because this is still a handy trick to know in case you come across that specific scenario another caveat to this technique is that soothe has a fast release setting but still sometimes that release isn't fast enough for what you need it to do for example i have also seen jason joshua use this soothe technique to sidechain to just have the low end frequencies of the 808 dug down whenever the kick hits soothe now this thing will change your life with sidechain compression. It's the fastest and it only takes away exactly what you're feeding it. So if you feed it a kick and you want to take away the same frequency in that 808, this Soothe will only take out the frequency that the kick is delivering to it. And if I open up Cisco Pro, you can really see how this Soothe is affecting your low end.
So as you can see and clearly hear, Soothe is ducking off the low end frequencies of the 808 whenever the kick hits, but the release is not fast enough for how fast the kick sample is, which is why you see this gradual curve on the 808 whenever the kick hits. Not only that, but if you pay attention, you'll be able to audibly hear the pumping of the 808 recovering from the ducking of the Soothe sidechain, which will 100% throw off the low end impact of your mix. Just to show you again, I have the release set as fast as possible on Soothe and I just want you guys to pay attention to the pumping of the 808 after each kick hit. So it kind of sounds like a boom, boom, bouncy kind of low in 808. Now I'll play the kick in 808 one more time together, but with the Soothe bypass and take note on how much more consistent the low end sounds. So that's just the kick in 808 with the clip gain automation on the 808. And if you look again, the waveform looks and sounds much more consistent. So with the Soothe sidechain, and without the Soothe sidechain. So as you can see, this is still a great technique, but you have to be mindful of a few things whenever you're trying this out for yourself. Again, it all boils down to the sounds that are being used within the mix, which is why sound selection is so important and understanding how to mix whatever sounds you're being presented with to make them work together as best as possible is very crucial, which is what engineering is all about. But now that you have the knowledge, I recommend you go try these techniques out for yourself and let me know how they work out in your mixes. Drop a like if you found this video helpful and if you have your own low end mixing techniques Techniques, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I would love to talk with you guys about everything mixing and if you're new to engineering and want to learn how to record and use Pro Tools like a professional yourself then I highly recommend for you to check out my Pro Tools recording course which will show you how to engineer like a professional in no time but if you want to get straight into the next video then I highly recommend for you guys to click this video right here where you will learn all about luffs and why you should not master your songs for streaming platforms I'll see you guys in the next video peace